Hello artist. How are you doing today? Hopefully well. Nice Saturday. Uh, I am Sarah and we are going to be doing an acrylic painting today. So yesterday we did Gerbera Daisy. Uh, so today I wanted to continue that theme and do another floral study of Gerbera Daisies. This time it's just going to be a still life of a, a vase with Gerbera Daisies in it. Uh, so it won't be quite the study that we did yesterday. This is more um, more about the still life itself than the flower. But we are going to at least stick with the theme. So I uh, want to really quickly talk about how my system works. So um, I have a reference photo that I go off of and you can too. If you check out my... Um, Discord site right here that I'm pointing to. Um, there should be somewhere on my Twitch site. Uh, they've changed things around, but I think under the about page, there's a button that says Discord. You can also type exclamation point Discord in my um, chat, my, my stream chat, and that will give you the link. However you need to get there, this is what you're going to see. All right, so you come to my page, ArtShare, and then I've got a channel here, Reference Photos. And then from Reference Photos, right here, you will see I post the reference photo for whatever art we're doing that day right there. So this is what we're gonna be painting today. All right, so I just wanted to give you that um, so that you can see what you can do. Now just to show you some other things that are going on here. So there's also Art Crit. This is where people post pictures that they've done. So we've got some different artwork here. And we can talk about it and, uh, and do critiques of the artwork. All right. So also I have my class calendar here. So if you want to see, um, it's just a link to my website, but if you want to see um, you know what what's coming up then that's a good place to start okay so let's do some painting I, I want to talk about my supplies really quick I've got water and I've got a palette and paint brushes the um, brushes that I have is a size 6 round brush and um, this is actually a 3 quarter wash brush but the equivalent would be a size 10 or 12 filbert Filbert is a flat brush that has that, that rounded uh, tip there. Palette knife, a canvas. Now I'm using canvas board, so it's very thin. And that's just because I paint a lot of these. And um, you know, so, so they stack up after a while. But also, um, these are nice because you can actually put these in frames. So like if you wanted to give your painting that you do today to a family member or a friend, um, that you can actually frame this because it's so thin. So keep that in mind. Paper towels, essential. We will, we will definitely be needing those. And then I've got my paints. Um, really basically, you don't need anything fancy. Now I'm using Liquitex Heavy Body Paint but you, you don't need to use this. You could use like basic. Liquitex makes a, um, a, a line called basic and uh, you just need red, yellow, and blue, brown, and white. Now I ran out, for some reason, titanium white is on back order right now everywhere. I don't know what's going on with that. So I happen to have some of this um, laying around. So that's why, as you can see, it's not Liquitex. This is um, a master's touch. So that's the point. These are the colors you need. They don't, and it doesn't have to be the specific colors that I have. All right. So let's go ahead. Hello, Crixano. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. First things first, you want your canvas, which I'm using 9 by 12 by the way, that's the, the size that I use. And I put paper down on my desk underneath um, because acrylic paint 
does it is permanent and you might be able to scratch it off but on like a wood surface in fact you could you might be able to see like a little blue dot over here where like I had gotten some paint there um, I'm gonna have to like really work at that to get that up so you want to protect your surface okay so let's go ahead and get started we are going to do um, we're gonna use our uh, large brush first and we are going to do a wash on the canvas so we're going to take some blue let's go ahead and wet our brush so the way I like to do it this is similar to how you're going to clean your brush whenever you're trying to get paint off you put it in the water and then just press it down. See those bubbles coming up? So press it down on both sides. What that's doing is getting all of the air out of the brush so that you don't have weird pockets where the, the paint um, isn't smooth. Okay. All right, so once we've got all of that, let me let me actually get paper towel ready and I'm not wearing my apron it's over, hanging over there but you do probably want to wear something um, you know if you if you like your clothes then I would wear a cover cover of some kind because acrylic paint is permanent acrylic paint will love you forever Okay, so I'm just getting some of the water off. You don't need to get too much of it off because we're gonna actually use our water so um, to create a little tiny bit thinner paint than what we've got here. So when you take it out of the tube, like when, you, when it comes out of the tube, um, if hopefully you are using this and you're not using, um, let's see if I have an example. Uh, this, this kind of acrylic paint here this is called craft paint and this is way too liquidy so if you are using this kind of paint um, you don't need to do any of the water mixing that I'm doing and I highly suggest that you invest in some tube paints because the tube paints are, th are thicker consistency and a little bit easier to work with alright so if you're using tube paints hopefully you're gonna come into the side of the paint you're not gonna dip straight down into the paint you're gonna come into the side and just pull a little bit up with your brush just pull it up to the wall of the, the little well and what you're doing what's that what's that's doing is it's mixing the water on your brush with the paint and just making it a little bit more liquidy and then we're just gonna start painting back and forth oh you know what I'm gonna add a little bit of white to this I just decided Hmm. I haven't really used this paint before, so we'll see. Um, all right, I'm just going to go ahead and mix some white right into that. I want this canvas to be a little bit lighter because we're going to do our vase is going to be a darker blue. Is that light enough? I could probably go a little lighter. I'm going to go a little lighter. So I'm just scooping some titanium white and mixing it in. Now I'm using um, a palette here, but you can actually do this on a flat surface. And in fact, when I do oil painting, um, that's how I usually use a flat surface, like a flat palette. Um, I particularly like acrylic, like, like clear acrylic, because um, you can see your paints better, in my opinion. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get a little bit of water on my brush 
it still had some blue paint on there. I'm going to come come in and grab some of this. Oops. And then I'm going to paint right over that blue. Now it should mix a little bit because it wasn't completely dry. And that's okay. Now you just paint back and forth. You can do long strokes or you can do short strokes. I'm just doing short. <clears throat> Now, because I had that dark bit at the top, it's going to actually create some visual interest where it, it uh, gradually gets lighter as it goes down, which I personally like. So I think it's not a problem that I did that. That's one of those happy accidents, you know. All right. Um, whenever you go to get paint, get a little bit of water on your brush because otherwise it's going to do something called dry brushing. Dry brushing is where when you go to, hold on, let me see if I can imitate it like that. Um, where you can see, you can still see the canvas through the brush. There's a little bit of dry brushing here at the edge of that. Um, that is no bueno. Like you can use that as a technique. Um, there are times when you want dry brushing as a technique, but when you're just trying to cover the surface of a painting, you don't want dry brushing because that is, um, it's just annoying. It's just extra work for you. So always get just a little bit of water and just kind of mix it in right there at the edge of your paint. All right, now we're not going to come all the way down and I am going to leave an area here of, of white. This is going to create some visual interest. Let's see, I want to come down, actually probably right about here, where it's about uh, a third, maybe, left over, down at the bottom. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to wash my paint brush off, and I'm going to mix it with white paint. So just go back and forth. I'm going to pick up some pure white paint. It got a little bit of blue in it um, from the water, but that's okay. And I'm going to paint right here. Right here in this open area that I left. And if you didn't leave an open area, that's okay. You can also just paint the white, like especially if it's a little bit dry. I'm going to pick up a little more white paint. Now I'm going to paint right over the edges of my blue. Now, because my blue is still wet, it's going to start mixing. All right, and I'm going to show you guys some something cool. All right, so clean off your brush entirely. And you can dry it. And then you're going to come right at the edges of this and just feather it. So you're just all I'm doing is just very lightly just going over the just going over the the edge between the blue and the color that I just made. Clean it again, dry it again. And I like to feather in different directions and it gets you like a smoother, a smoother gradient. You have to do this before everything's completely dry. But you can actually do this with like paint on your wall too. Like if you wanted to paint, a gradient, you just put two different colors next to each other 
and then feather them. Painting on a wall though takes a little bit more prep because uh, you want to paint the colors that you want there first in big strips and then let it dry and then go in and paint just a small, like a narrow strip of, of one color and a narrow strip of the other color and then brush those together. Um, but it's the same technique, it's just uh, on a, a bigger scale. So I'm just coming in here and just feathering and of course this is with a dry brush. So what you end up happening, uh, you end up getting is you get this, this really cool, interesting area here that's, that's white. And of course I had my dark at the top because of accidentally doing that. So it, it really creates this bold, dramatic uh, visual interest here. Now I'm going to additionally, I'm going to get some water on my brush. I'm going to additionally pick up a little bit more of this blue and just come in here on the side because I realized I didn't have a whole lot of coverage earlier. So I'll, this is basically just my second coat. That's all it is. You don't necessarily need this, but I'm just coming in and doing this. This is for me. This is for me because it will bug me to not have to not have um, full coverage here. Oops. I'm trying to blend this white in, but it was mostly dry, so I'm trying to cover up kind of the weird brush strokes that are going on here. There we go. All right. Now we're going to do the bottom. So I'm cleaning my brush off because the bottom is going to be a totally different color. We're going to make kind of a light sandy color. So we're going to use yellow. And I'm going to use a very tiny bit of our red. So I'm going to actually put the red in a different well and just pick it up by um, palette knife. And then we're going to also be mixing some white in there. So I want to, I'm going to get more white. Okay. So I've got my white and I'm just going to chunk in here about equal parts yellow and white and then I'm just going to get just a tiny bit of red. Now red goes a really long way so you don't need much of it. We're just tinting it so that we get a little sandy color. See that red? I probably put too much red in there but you know what? It's okay. It's okay. This is just our table color. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to mix just a tiny bit of this blue in there. Um, I'm going to wash my, I mean not wash it, but I'm going to. So blue and orange. I've got a color wheel here. Blue and orange, if you look, here's blue, here's orange. See how they're opposite sides of the color wheel? Let's see if it's better on this side. There we go. So here's orange, here's blue, and um, let's see, I can turn this so that the arrow is pointing. So these are called complementary colors because they're on opposite sides. When you mix complementary colors, what you get is a medium gray. Now, if you mix a little bit more of the warm color, then you, it turns brown. So gray and brown are actually the same family, just one is warmer than the other. Gray, that's why they're both neutral, because they're, they're in the middle. You know, they're, they're the mix of the two colors. So what we're going to do, I want to make this just a tiny bit more brown. I'm going to mix just a tiny bit of blue in there. 
just a little bit. And that should hopefully brown that up. Now, if I put too much blue, what's going to happen is it's going to make it green. Watch. I bet I put too much. Blue goes a really long way. I did. You know what? This happens. All right. Well, I don't want to waste any paint. So what's going to happen is that we are going to be using a green later. So I'm just going to hang on to this color because it's not a terrible color. Maybe it's kind of pukey, I guess. I just added too much blue. If you only did a tiny bit of blue, which is what I should have done, then you should get like just a, a slightly muted orange color. But, all right, <clears throat> let's see. You know what, I'm just gonna go with it. I'm just gonna use this color. We're not even gonna, I'm not gonna worry about the orange or anything else. It happens. Artistic license, right? All right. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this color and just paint down here. And we're just painting straight across. Nothing fancy. We're not gonna be doing any weird mixing or anything like that. Just painting straight across. So we are changing get a little bit of water. We are changing, like if you followed me and you've got this weird pukey green color, which I actually kind of like, to be honest. It's like a chartreuse. Which is such a nice word to say, chartreuse. Um, but yeah, if you have this color, then we have just changed from the reference photo. We've, we've made changes. We've decided to go our own way. So to get a straight line, the best thing is to move your entire arm rather than your wrist. So I'm, I'm actually moving my entire, I'm really, I move my entire body, but it's just very slight. And that's how you get a straight line. Oops. You also want to make sure that your brush is not dry brushing. Otherwise you're going to get a, a weird, uh, you'll get a weird patchy line. Now I kind of messed up a little bit over there, but I'm just going to leave that. It's fine. It's fine. If you were making this like as a gift for someone or something, they're not even going to notice. They're not even going to notice. If you do want to fix it, here's what you do. It should still be wet. If it's not, you just got to paint over it. If it's still wet, you can take a clean brush. It is not still wet. Oh no, it is. It's still just a little bit. You take a clean brush, mostly dry it off, and then you come and you just work your brush across it. If it's completely wet, then you, you don't even have to you, you, sh you can just wipe it up. But, it, but mine was like on its way out. It was on its way to being dry. And I'm just wiping off my brush. Here we go. Look at that. Look at that. Clean lines. Clean lines, baby. That's what we do here at this studio. Clean lines. I'm just picking up some more green paint. Being careful when I get to my nice clean line at the top. Just doing that second coat because like I said before, I don't like being able to see my brush strokes or my canvas underneath. That's just a personal preference. You do not have to, to fix that. Some people actually really like to be able to see their brush strokes. Um, especially if you're a more impressionistic, oops, a more impressionistic painter. I am not. So, 
All right. So now we have our canvas. Now we're going to let this dry a little bit. Oh, you know what we need to do? Hold on. We got to do our shadow. Let's go ahead and blend that in. So we're going to take a little bit of our burnt umber. Or our brown color. And I'm going to actually mix a little bit of this green with this brown. So whatever color you used for the table, we're going to mix a little bit of that together. Did I do enough? I don't know. Today might not be a day for mixing for me, which is funny because usually I'm very good at mixing. That's like one of my favorite things is making colors. No, that's pretty good. I'm going to actually pull in a, a little bit more brown. Let's see. I'm wiping my palette knife because I don't want to contaminate my brown. I'm making this a dark color. Okay, so we basically, all I did was I mixed a little bit of brown with my green. And what I'm going to do is we are going to um, make kind of a, let's see, let's get my, we're going to make kind of like a, a triangle of sorts. So right here, like kind of in the middle, going to come off to the side there. And it's just like this weird, I don't know, fishy shape. This is going to be the shadow of our of our vase. Now, I personally like to blend things. So, I'm going to blend my shadow. And remember Excuse me. So remember when we did the blending with the white and the blue, this is going to be sort of similar. Uh, I'm, I think that my green is mostly dry, so I'm going to need to pick up a little bit more green and just do right along the edge. So I'm not, I'm not actually touching anything yet. I'm just painting a little bit of green along the edge. Now I'm going to clean my brush off. That This is just so that I have wet green next to the brown. I'm going to clean my brush off, dry it, and then I'm going to just feather the edges. I'm just blending the two together. This didn't have any green next to it. I'm going to put a little bit of green. Dry my brush. And then I'm going to just, um, just blend. I'm just blending the outside. All this does is it just creates like a nice little transition 
from the color from one color to another. You don't have to do this. This is just something that I specifically like to do. I think that it makes shadows look more interesting. I'm going to actually pick up a little bit of pure brown for the middle. Now, if you really wanted to get fancy, you could have done this while it was wet. So you could have just added the brown right onto the wet green, but I, I started adding the shadow after it was already dry. So after it had already started drying rather, I guess I should say. that that nice shadow there okay we are done with the background so I'm gonna let this dry now if you have like a hair dryer or something like that don't do this with watercolor but if you have a hair dryer or something like that um, acrylic paint you can uh, you can um, dry it if you want. I am going to clean my palette. I'm just cleaning up this pukey brown. Oops. getting paint everywhere. Look at this. Paint. Paint. All right. So. All right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually use like pure blue. So let's see. Where's my blue? There's my blue. I'm going to put some pure blue and we're going to make uh, our shape. Now we need to wait for this to dry. So I'm, I'm mixing my color first, although there's not really anything to mix. We're just doing the phthalo blue. Might, I'm debating. This is drying pretty quickly, but um, maybe I want to use my hair dryer. I'm thinking about it. Because <laughs> I do want this to be pretty dry when we start. And we can start up here in this area. So let's do that. Get your brush wet just a little bit. Just a little bit. And pick up some of the pure blue. And what we're going to do is we are going to start with a circle right above, like, a, like the circles right above the, um, uh, horizon line there that we've got. Excuse me. One moment. That sneeze. Got my, got my nose going. All right, so we're starting with our little circle, picking up a little bit more of the blue paint, and we're going to bring that down into like an oval. I'm going to keep just making this a little bit bigger. It's going to come all the way to like where your shadow is. 
it's going to come to like right on the inside of the shadow, right? Keep debating whether to get water, but the problem is, is with um, with this particular blue. Now I'm going to flatten this a little bit at the bottom, so it's not going to be round. It's going to it's going to actually go flat across. I do need blue. Just thins out a lot. It thins out very easily, so I'm trying not to put too much water on there because then it'll thin it out. And then it, and then you just can see through it. All right. So I'm what I'm doing is I'm going to get let's See, I maybe want to go just a little bit farther. I'm going to get right up to the edge of my shadow. And then I'm just going to do flat across. I'm going to turn mine around because I am right handed. So coming at it from the right side is easier. Okay, and we're just going to come across for right now. Now mine is a little bit lopsided, so let's see if I can fix this. I think I just need to make mine more of um, an oval. This side is funky. And it doesn't help that my, this area here is still wet. That's why you really do want it to be completely dry before you start. All right, so there's a couple things I want to do here. One, um, I need to make like a rim here. So let's see, let's get the, pick up some blue. And we are going to just make kind of like a smile that goes across. I think maybe I want to use my smaller brush for this, but I need this brush for bigger. Um, we're going to still use the bigger brush, so you don't have to clean that off yet. I just think it'll be easier to make this with a smaller brush. This is like the rim of our pot. Ah, oh, and there's too much water. And that's why, see, it's making it where you can see through it. This is the problem with blue. Blue just particularly is a pain. It's a pain in the butt. Okay. And once the water's on there, you can't do anything about it, really. You just got to wait for it to dry.
too much paint. So what I'm doing is my same trick as earlier. Luckily it's still wet. So I'm just coming in with a dry brush and fixing. There we go. Man, I'm not having luck with this blue today. All right, well, while that's drying, because I, there's too much water there, I'm gonna actually clean off my brush. I'm gonna pick up some white. And on the left side, I'm going to blend in some white. So just pick some of that up. And we're just gonna paint that right on there. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of this on the top because the white will um, soak some of that water up because white definitely has more opacity, meaning that it's less see-through. All right, so I've got my white. Now I'm going to pick up some brown. And on the other side, I'm going to paint brown. All right, now, this is where you can use your big brush. I think I'll continue to use my big brush. So we're gonna do the blending. So I'm drying my brush off. And I'm just gonna come right down, and you can get some, some blue if you need to, and just come right down in the middle between the two colors if, you're, if your blue is dry. I'm just blending the two colors and then drying it off. So I'm just like drying off my brush. Now on the white side, let me just make it rounded. Like, you know, just use your brush and like let it be rounded. blending problems today. I think I just had too much paint on there. All right, so, so I'm blending on that side, I'm blending on this side, and then Let's see, I want to, I'm gonna bring a little bit more blue in the middle here. And I'm gonna do circular, kind of like a circular. And I'm just like loosening my brush. I'm, I'm light, I'm, as I'm doing the circular motion, I'm barely touching the canvas just enough I'm feathering it. Because I have a little bit too much paint on here, I think it's, it's mixing in a not pleasing way. I'm probably gonna have to get some new water here shortly. All right. So now I'm doing my feathering bit where I dry my brush off I've got the color swirled in here. I've dried my brush off, and now I wanna come in and just work, work the edges of things. You're gonna to have to continue to dry your brush off. I'm going through paper towels like crazy today. This 
This is reminding me a little bit of the fruit that we did a few weeks ago. It's so funny that what you guys see, because you're looking straight down at it and because I'm looking at an angle, it's very different from what I see. All right. So what we're trying to get is we're trying to get to where it's lighter on this side and I'm going to actually bring in a little bit of blue here on the on the outside because I don't want that white to go all the way to the edge. So I'm bringing some blue in, some pure blue. And then I'm going to blend All right. Um, now I am going to, let's see. Before everything gets too dry, I'm going to bring in some pure white. Okay, I've got to get a new paper towel. Look at that. That is not happening not happening anymore okay so I'm gonna pick up some pure white and come right in here all right so I'm wiping off my brush and then I'm going to come in and just feather that in. I don't want it to stay pure white. I want it to stay, but I do want it to stay light. There we go. I can tell that in my critique, my vase is going to make uh, headlines when it comes to like what I could have done better. I can see that already. I just did not do the vase in in the my normal my norm my normal Sarah fashion. Okay, um, we do want a tiny streak of white over here on this side. And that is because we've got um, a reflected shadow. I mean, a uh, reflected light, sorry. Opposite of shadow, we've got reflected light. And I'm just mixing in a little bit of blue over here. Just so it's not pure white, because that, that part was already dry. We just want just a little, little bit. Okay. I'm, I'm going to have to be okay with how this vase looks. I'm not, but I'm going to have to. Something about the overall shape is bothering me too, but you know, we, we have to move on. Let's get our smaller brush. So we still haven't done anything with the, you think the vase looks really good? Oh, well, thank you, Crixano. I appreciate that. <laughs> I needed that vote of confidence, so thanks. 
Um, we are going to, we still need to do like a little bit with the rim here. So I'm going to take some pure blue and kind of go underneath where that rim was. And it, hopefully, mine's still a little wet, so I can blend that down. But I just wanted some darker blue right under the rim. All right, um, I'm going to, let's see, I'm without water on my brush, I've cleaned the water off. I'm going to go ahead and paint some blue up here because I didn't blend things. Then I'm going to pick up just a tiny bit of white. Blend that that way. And then I'm going to pick up some brown and blend that from the other side. We're just doing this on the rim. Now our white should come around the top of the rim a little bit. Because it's going to get more light at that, that point than it would at the bottom. I'm going to mix just a tiny bit of brown for right here underneath the rim. So some of this is just knowing how shadows look on cylinders. And I've done cylinder classes before. I'm telling you they were better than this, but a lot of this is going to be covered up by flowers. So I don't, I don't need to be stressing too much about it. Like for example, this part up here that's, that's um, gone over, that's fine because flowers are going to be covering that. So I, I really need to be stressing less about what this looks like because, uh, it's going to be covered up. Okay. Next, we're going to do our leaves. So we're going to make a dark green. I'm going to go get some new water. So I'm going to put you guys on a very, very brief pause just to get water. I will be right back. And I'm back. Thank you for being so patient. All right. So I'm going to put my big brush to the side because we're going to be using our small brush now. So first we're going to make, uh, we're going to take some of our burnt umber, our brown, and I need a little bit more because I'm running out here. This also hopefully gave some of this time to dry because it really is important with acrylic paint unless you're mixing colors like we have been, I, I, you really need it to dry. Like you, you don't want to be, it, 
especially with blue, it's just going to, it just becomes a problem. Um, okay, and let's see. We're going to mix a little bit of blue with this. So I'm going to put some more blue in here. Starting to run out of blue. I actually bought more blue. Blue is not on back order, just the white for I don't even know what reason. Um, now we're going to actually bring in a little bit of yellow. So I'm just going to put that in its own pot. All right. So we're going to make dark green and I'm going to make it here in the middle. So I've got some brown and I've got some blue. And we're going to start with like a dark blue. Now, if I've learned anything from mixing my sandy color that you can now see at the bottom, look how sandy that is. Uh, I have learned <laughs> to start a little bit at a time. So we're going to be adding a little bit of yellow to this, but we're going to do just a little bit at a time. Oops, a little slip of my palette knife there. Okay. Notice that this looks almost black. That, that's a really good mix if it looks almost black. Okay. Now burnt umber actually already has a little bit of yellow in it. So technically this is already kind of a dark green. But So I'm going to get a little bit of yellow. Not much, just a little. Now yellow doesn't go as far as blue does. Blue is a super mixer, but that is already making a very nice dark green. When I say super mixer, I mean like you need so little blue to really make a difference. Like you could get like a dot of the blue and it would make a huge difference versus a dot of the yellow would barely make a dent. So that's what I mean by the super mixer. Blue just goes a really long way. Probably has something to do with like where it is on the spectrum of light. Because red is another super mixer and it's on the opposite end of the spectrum. So maybe it has something to do with that. Maybe like the, the blue and the red are, um, you know, because they're on the outside of the spectrum. Who knows? Okay. So I've got a nice dark green here. I'm going to go ahead and wet my brush. Get a little bit of water. Okay. And come in on the side. Just use some of that water that was on my brush. Now what we're going to do is we're going to paint some leaves. So I'm going to start with a leaf going to the right here. So we're going to just starting kind of about the middle. Just make like a nice curved line. Then we're going to come up from the bottom on the right side. We're going to do like scoop. Uh, it's going to curve in and then out like an S. And we'll just, we'll just fill that in. And see, so I can cover that, that little bit that I went over, I can cover that now with my green. And this green is dark enough where I won't have to cover it more than once. So the great thing about acrylic paint is you can cover up. going to bug me. Okay. So let's do another one. Let's do another one. I'm going to do, let's see, I'll do one over here. 
So we're going to do a small little scoop there. And then making a point here, I'm going to do a bigger scoop like that. And then I'm filling it in. All right, let's do another one. Uh, let's see. So this we'll do one right up here. We're just gonna. Have a curved line in. Okay. Let's see, look at that. I like covered up that whole rim area that it was a problem earlier. All right, let's do one more. Let's do one more leaf. Now I'm going to do this coming over here. So like a curved line up and then this one is going to be similar to this where we're going to do an S Now, if you want to get that point, you just have to basically barely let your brush touch the, um, the surface of the canvas. You just pull it and then barely let it touch it. And that's how you get a point. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a little bit of a lighter green. Now we already kind of have this lighter green. If you didn't mix this color, you can just mix in uh, a little bit of cadmium yellow into your green here. I'll just do that just to show you guys. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and just mix it kind of on the outside. I'm just I guess that's a little darker than, than the green that we had made for the table. that up and then we're going to do two sections so um, here I'm going to do All right, so here's the second section. So we're going to leave like a little bit of uh, that um, separation that leaves have in the middle, you know, like that goes into the stem. Now 
you can't see that probably very well. Let me hold that up so you can see, because I just realized that the light was shining on that in a really funky way. So see how I like, I, I am leaving, I'm leaving the, um, that kind of stem area in the middle. It's hard to paint like that, but I wanted you guys to see what I was doing because I didn't realize that, hold on. Come on, there we go. That's a little better. You can see that a little better. I mean, it's darker. All right, now I'm going to do over here first so I can let this dry before I start doing this one. If you want a little bit of visual interest, you can pick up like either that lighter green that we had before and pull that in. You can pull in pure yellow if you want. I'll be honest, this was more than I really wanted. I picked up too much on my brush. I made a little mistake and so I'm painting over it. What I did was I just accidentally uh, painted too far all right let's do another leaf let's see this one This doesn't have to come all the way in because there's going to be flowers and stuff in front of it. All right, last one. Okay, so we've got our leaves on there. I 
Now we really, really, really need to let these dry. So um, I'm going to, let's see, let's see what our first color is going to be. Let's do, um, we're going to do red. Oh, I already had red. Psh. Look at that. Extra red. Let's see. All right, so let's think about this. While this is stuff is drying, I don't know what that is. Um, so we're going to have a red flower here. And we're going to have, let's see, according to the picture, we've got uh, kind of a pinkish flower here so it's going to be red first and then we'll add some light to it. Um, we have a red flower here and then we have a yellow flower down here. Okay. All right. Now you can tell if your stuff is dry by if it's got any, like if you hold it kind of in the light and it's shiny at all. See like, I don't know if you guys can see that this is shiny here. Um, I'm going to turn this back on. It's like a low. There we go. Um, if it's still a little shiny, then that means that it is not dry. All right. So, you know what? I'm doing the touch test and it's tacky. So that means that it's pretty dry up there. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start. So um, I'm just going to take pure Theo Violet, maybe a little water in there just to make it smooth. And we are just going to do stripes. We're just going to do lines starting from a center. So let's see, let's put our center right about here. And we're just going to do a stripe straight out like that. We can make that a little thicker. I'm going to make that there, like that. And we'll do another one right next to it. I'm going to get a little bit of water just to make that liquidy. I'm going to do, let's see. You want to make sure that they're all about the same length. And we're just going to go around in a radius. One thing you can do if you're not sure about like you, you can do like crosses like so you could um, this could have been one long continuous one if that helps because sometimes that does. Now we're going to be going over our 
leaves. Oops, and I'm making my lines a little bit thicker than I would like to. There we go. It's got a nice big daisy. Okay. So we're gonna actually use a little bit of our burnt umber. And we're just gonna paint just a tiny bit of a center on the flower. It's okay if it blends, like if your paint is not dry yet, that's fine. All right, so now we're gonna do our second flower. Now our second flower, we're going to mix a little bit of, let's see, I'm gonna actually use this color over here. I'm gonna take some of that. Since I had the red, but you can pull some red. Let's see, I just wanna use that up. So I'm going to bring that to the middle. I'm gonna bring in a tiny bit of blue. Now remember we don't need very much blue. So probably even less than that. All right. And it was, it was too much blue. Ah, I'm telling you blue goes so far. It goes so far. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna pick up some more red. We're just gonna force it. All right, so what we're trying to do is make like a, a kind of a burgundy, like a darker red. There we go. And I'm going to mix just a tiny bit of yellow into that. So we're gonna orange it up a little bit. That'll just warm up that red. Now remember yellow doesn't go as far, so I'm gonna get like a, you know, a decent amount on there. And this is just stuff you learn over time, that blue goes really far, yellow doesn't go very far at all. There we go. Okay. And another paper towel bites the dust. So I'm gonna get another. We go through a lot of paper towels in this class. We are not a tree loving class. It's okay, because trees are murderous anyway. All right, so. So let's pick up a little bit of this color that we just did and we're gonna do the exact same thing. So let's make like a, our middle point. I'm gonna make my middle point right about there. And then we're gonna start. Now, um, let's, let's do this one a little bit different. I'll show you how, what I was talking about earlier. So I'm gonna make my, you know, I'm gonna make my first stem, I mean a uh, petal. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make another petal coming from the other side. So then we get an idea of how far out we want things to go, right? 
So then I'm going to do, maybe I'll do another one this way. So we got like a kind of a cross action going on here. Like an X. There. All right. Now we can just fill in. And it's okay if your flowers overlap each other. So another way to do it. Now this one had less petals on it because I did it in that kind of methodical manner, which means that you don't fit as many right because this one wasn't wasn't an exact cross oh well, I can see a cross in there well you know whatever I'm just gonna make these a little bit thicker Oops, too much paint. If you're picking up too much paint on your brush, then it's just not smooth enough. So you just need to get, add a little bit of water. It's not liquidy enough. Okay. So we've got our, our second daisy. Now, which one do you like better? I don't know. I kind of like my first one better. So maybe that's the better technique for me. So that's something you can try different techniques and see which one, you know, works better for you. All right. So let's go ahead. Um, We're going to mix, I'm going to mix a little bit of white with red and I don't, I don't have a whole lot of red left in there so I'm just going to mix it in here. Get a little bit of water. That water's looking really yummy right now. All right, so this is going to be a highlight for our first flower. So we're just going to, on each of our petals, we're just going to come down. And I'm just not, I'm not filling the whole thing in. Just to highlight. <clears throat> um, now I want to, I'm going to add to this color that we made here. I'm going to take a little bit of this color. I don't know why I did that move it over to the side I guess and I'm gonna mix some yellow into it and 
And actually, I might actually mix a little more red into that too. So we pick up some red. Red's another one of those that kind of goes a long way, so you don't need much of it. But yeah, that's the color I want though. I wanted kind of like that dull red. Nice. Nice. Something's working for me today. Flux, hey, welcome. We're just painting a few daisies here today. All right, so I'm gonna pick up this like kind of reddish color that I made. And we're gonna, we're gonna do this one. <coughs> Excuse me. And again, we're just doing the highlights. Oh, you're drawing a tree. Very nice. Are you doing it from a photograph or from memory? I'm hoping from a photograph. Although you do really well from memory. This, most people I would not recommend doing from memory because from memory, nobody ever remembers things the way they actually are. Look at that, that's pretty. Like a little butterfly. It's like those little Rorschach tests, you know? I see a butterfly. What does that mean about me? That I'm crazy. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of the brown. Imaginary tree, all right, cool. Well, you do that well. Like I said, most people I wouldn't recommend that, but, but you, you do imaginary well. You're very illustrative with your art. Okay. So we're just get, getting a, a center in this flower. I'm waiting to do the yellow one last because the yellow is going to be uh, on top, like in the front. So I'm doing that one last. I'm like letting things dry too, by the way. That's why there's little pauses. Slightly fantastical. Well, that pretty much describes a lot of your artwork. So I think that's great. I can't wait to see it. I hope you'll share it. If you guys want to see some really cool art, check out Art Share. Flux posts his stuff. Uh, which is his own work and um, not not the stuff that we, we do in the class. It's his own work and it's really amazing. So I highly recommend checking it out. Okay. Oh, Rorschach. Oh, let's see if I even know how to spell that. Hold on. R O R S C H. I don't know. Hold on. R O R S C H A C H. Oh man, I was so good. Okay, here. I'm going to, um, can't believe I was going to be spelling that correctly. I started second guessing myself. That's what I get. Uh, okay. There you go, Rorschach test. So what the Rorschach test is, is that it's an ink blot and it's um, symmetrical. So like, you know, some ink is, is in the middle of a piece of paper, it's been folded, it's been reopened up and it looks like something. And um, it's, a, it's a psychological evaluation that the psychologist uses to get you to start talking. So like, what does this look like? And if you're thinking that everything, all of them look like a certain thing, then that's what's on your mind. And so it helps the psychologist kind of see what you're thinking about. It doesn't actually mean that you're crazy or anything like that. Um, but I mean, it might, but no, uh, no, it's really just a way I think for a psychologist or for a counselor to get you talking about something like maybe you don't even know what's on your mind. And so the Rorschach test is a way of like bringing that out. 
our subconscious needs sometimes needs a, a, a jump start, you know? Okay. So. Let's do this. We're going to add, we're going to add a little bit of yellow to this flower up here. And I'm just kind of dotting it on. <laughs> you see an axe murder in those ink shapes? Flux, I, I worry about you. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. But it can't be good, right? Can't be good. I'm just kidding. You seem a bit of all right to me, so I think you're fine. No axe murderer there. All right. Um, there a test they do for gifted children that's like that? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Um, I'm trying to remember, I mean, because I, I took a couple IQ tests when I was little, but I don't remember there being any Rorschach type stuff in it, so I'm not sure. Um, you said, another thing that you've seen on Bones, I love that show, uh, where you just go back and forth saying a word that's on your mind. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you just like kind of spitball off of each other and that gets you to jog your, jog your thinking. Um, let's do this. Let's see. I'm looking at this reference photo and I'm, I'm debating what I want to do next. It's got like this kind of pink color. So we already mixed this pink, but let's mix a little bit of white with this pink. The episode where Bones blunted out, she wanted Boost Baby. Oh, huh? I don't remember that one, but I mean, there was a lot of seasons of Bones. All right, so I just mixed a little pink, and I just used my brush. I just picked up a little bit of white and just mixed it directly in the pink, because we're not using this pink for anything else that I know of. And we're just going to just kind of dot it around. And I didn't, I didn't like, um, pay any special attention to... Like, I, I let some of the dark pink stay on my brush because then what it does is it ends up, uh, it ends up mixing in and so you get multiple colors. So all I did was just kind of dot around the outside and that's it. All right, I'm going to get some more brown because I want this to be darker than it is. Let's see, maybe I need a little more water. Water sometimes is the key ingredient. Water's the key ingredient to a lot of things, actually. Water is life. It's life. All right, so I'm going to use the same pink according to the reference photo. I hope this is what... Um, Oh, cool. Yeah, I'll go check it out. It's season four. All right, so I'm going to pick up some more of this, this light pink that we did earlier. And I'm going to dot around the outside of this one. I don't know if this is really what Gerbera daisies look like. I don't know. I'm, I'm trusting that the reference photo is correct. Although I did that with the orca, and that wasn't correct. Orcas have different shaped uh, schnozzes than the one that was in my reference photo. So, you know. Can't always trust a reference photo. You cannot always trust your reference photo. Sometimes you just need to look things up and see what they look like.
All right. Close enough. So I just dotted around the outside. All right, we're getting ready for our yellow, y'all. We're getting ready. Yellow's a bear sometimes. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to make this a slightly orange yellow. All right, here's why. Remember how I said that yellow doesn't mix very well? It also doesn't cover very well. So um, I'm going to put a little bit more yellow in here. We're going to mix a tiny bit of red in it because red is more opaque. We might actually mix a little bit of white too. Uh, let's see, I need more white. Because um, yellow is just very translucent. And so you would end up having to do like many, many coats of it. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to mix a new color. Actually, I'm just going to mix it right here in the yellow. I'm going to pick up this white and mix it in with my yellow. All right, that right there is already going to make it more opaque because the titanium white is opaque, meaning not see-through. Okay, not translucent. Or transparent is another one, but translucent is what you talk about when you talk about paints because transparency is the, is the, um, the gradient of trans, lucents like because paint is never purely transparent right like you can't completely see through it ever it's paint okay uh we are going to now mix in just a tiny bit of red and remember red kind of goes far so we don't need much we just want to warm up this yellow make it like a little bit of a golden yellow Kind of like the sandy color that we wanted for our um, table. Yeah, I'm having flashbacks right now to the beginning of the stream where we were trying to make a sandy color. Look at that, it's like exactly the same. So don't add blue to this or you get that color right there. This is actually a great color. Okay. So this is our base, because remember with like our reds, we did uh, like a base color and then we did another color on top of it. So this is our base. So our, our color on top of it's gonna actually be lighter. Let's pick up a little bit of water, pick up some paint, and let's go ahead and do our, uh, our flower. Now, I liked the way this flower was done. So I'm going to, let's see. My center is going to be right here. And this flower is gonna actually come over the side of the vase. So. And I'm gonna do mine in the style of this one where I just went around. You can do yours like this one if, you're, if you like that better. Where we did the more methodical approach. Whatever makes you happy, whatever feels comfortable, that's what you should do. Now, this is going to overlap, so this is gonna go over my red one. Now I'm having a little bit of an issue where when it gets to the outside, it's not rounded. So you can actually just take your brush and just pop from the other side, you know, just come down rather than going up. Just change the angle of your stroke.
Okay. And I'm going to, oh, I guess I need a little bit more water. That is some really gross looking water. It's going to clean up some of these lines. I've got so much paint on my brush. This is called loading the paintbrush. And you really want to avoid that because what happens when you load the paintbrush is the paint can get up into, I forget the name of this, but this part right here, and um, it can actually ruin your paintbrush. And it can make your bristles like come out. So I'm gonna get a little bit of water. Water helps with that because then you can just put the tip in there. You don't need to put the entire brush in. Okay, that's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. All right. All right, so for the middle of this flower, we're gonna do pure cadmium yellow. So let's see, I need to put a little bit of that in here because I use mine. Now you're gonna see how cadmium yellow paints by itself. Now it should be a little better because we're doing it over you'll see that it's very unmanageable. Cadmium yellow painting by itself is a pain, pain. I'm already annoyed. I'm already annoyed. Maybe I could add a little bit of white into it. I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna dot some more yellow in here. Since I'm working with it. Okay. I have to keep going around with this yellow. Just going around, just painting the yellow. And I'm letting mine go on kind of thick. Like I'm not I'm not trying to like uh, blend it or anything like that. And you probably can't even see this that well. Let me see if I hold this up. If you can see it any better. There we go. So you can see where like I'm just letting it kind of be on there thick you know, that, that lighter yellow. Flux, what are you thinking about cadmium? What are you thinking about cadmium? I'm gonna come in, I'm just coming in while I'm waiting for this yellow to dry. I am, I'm gonna come in and, and do some more of like some of my lighter colors like the red
Oh, thank you. Are you talking about yours? I hope so. Or are you talking about mine? I hope you're talking about yours because I can't wait to see it. Oh, mine? <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. I, it looks okay. It looks all right. It's not great, but I appreciate that. All right. I'm going to take some of this dark red color that I made and paint that in the middle of my yellow flower. Hello, sunshine. Used to, oh, oh, that's right, chemistry, forget. Okay, um, used to spectra analyze using plasma for cadmium in the lab. Excite the electrons into a higher state using the heat of the plasma. Then cool the sample and read the light given off when the electrons dropped back to their normal state. Ah, cool, that sounds really cool. Um, man, the heat of plasma. Oh no, the heat using the, uh, sorry, using the heat of the plasma. Yeah, that's, that's hot. <laughs> Cause plasma is the state between liquid and gas, right? Am I thinking of that right? I know that it's its own state, um, but I, I get confused sometimes. Or yeah. Or is plasma? I don't. I don't know. I don't remember now. Plasma is not after gas, right? You can't keep just heating up gas. Um, oh, it's above. Oh, okay. So it is above gas. More disassociated. Ah, uh, yeah. That was really cool. I am. Um, I, I loved chemistry, but I have forgotten so much of it, you know, so much. Um, yeah, plasma, that's, that's pretty hot. All right, here's what I'm doing. I'm mixing a little bit of yellow. I really don't, we don't need to mix this because it's for such a small thing, but um, here, you know what? 15 years since you were in the lab. Well, that is a quite a long time. I'm mixing a little bit of white with this. Oh, to me, the lab was the most fun. That was the most fun part. All right. I like experimenting. I like being in the studio. That's my favorite thing about art. Like, especially with textiles, I do a lot. It, it is chemistry. Like in textiles, I'm doing a lot of mixing and like I make my own dyes and things like that. Um, and, uh, you know, I have to mix in soda ash and things like that. So like, like we have to, like I have to wear a mask and everything, you know, because the chemicals that we're using are pretty, um, pretty intense. Like you don't want to breathe any of them in. Um, one time I didn't wear my mask like I was supposed to. And uh, <laughs> later on that day, you know, I, I was sneezed or something and I blew my nose and it had blue in it. Not good. Not good. Like that, that means I've been breathing that stuff in. Mm -mm. No bueno. You don't want to breathe chemicals in. That's not good. But anyway, I like being in the lab though. I like mixing things and making things and yeah, that was, that was the fun part for me. Okay. So now I'm coming in, I'm going to make this even more white. We're just going to, we're just going to bring in a lot of white into this. I'm coming around the outside.
and just doing the same thing that I did up here for like the pink, but we're just doing it, yeah, kind of a yellow. And I just mixed a lot of white with it. All right, now I'm going to actually take a little bit of my brown, maybe with a little water, because brown is finicky. And just very lightly mm, come in here and do the center there. Oh, and it mixed with some of my yellow. I didn't want that. I didn't want that. Here we go. Ah, close enough. Close enough. I might take some of the, actually, you know what? I like this yellow white. Hold on. We're gonna, we're gonna put a little bit of this on our petals. I want a little bit more highlight in this flower. So I'm putting some on my petals right there. Right there, look at that. Look what she did, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Worst chemical thing to happen to you was a leaking damp coursing machine uh, when you were a laborer. You're young, you got the chemical all over and came down with insane flu-like symptoms, but worse. Oh man, that doesn't sound good. Yeah. Chemicals are no bueno. Like you really got to be careful. Like you have to practice safe, safe um, handling, for sure when you're dealing with chemicals. Um, I mean, probably the worst thing for me is just breathing in soda ash. Like when, like when you mix the soda ash, like before you mix it when it's still in powdery form, like you can feel it going into your lungs. Like you really have to. I don't, I had my mask around here somewhere, but I mean, it's like one of those big, like huge masks, you know, like it's really, because I have to use the P100, um, like, which is the highest, like it, it, it can handle oils, water, like, so, um, dusts, like it can handle everything. Like it's supposed to, anyway. You were always getting acid burns. Oh, oh God, that hurts. Uh, okay, just wash it off. You're very steady handed, so you're good and clean in a lab. Oh, mm. just, just reading the words acid burn was not cool. <laughs> I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of pure red. I'm just playing around now at this point, right? And I'm just going to come in the middle, right in the middle, just like I did with that yellow white. We're just, just going to see what happens. Yeah, I did it. All right, let's do now. This has like a little bit of an arrangement. Yeah, I, I've been burned in the kitchen. Um, it's more that it affects me probably more than it affected you. <laughs> My brain uh, imagines what um, what that would feel like and then shoots off neurons. I have something called mirror touch synesthesia. And so my brain fires neurons it's not really supposed to be firing. And uh, I, I feel pain with certain things. Well, it's not even with certain things. I, I feel pain with a lot of things. I can't look at other people's like injuries. And um, anyway, it's a fun thing. Mirror touch, mirror touch synesthesia. Yeah. Had it since I was a baby. And my, um, my mom and sister have it too. So it's a, it's a fun thing. Um, all right. So, uh, we're gonna add some baby's breath. I'm actually, I'm thinking about this. Do we wanna add baby's breath? Yeah, we will, we will. We need to add a little something. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna take some white 
just pure white. And we are going to just add some little, some little dots here and there. We're going to add our baby's breath. <laughs> Your father's side are made of old boot leather and iron and stone. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right, so I've got some little dots there. I'm going to do some more little dots of white. Uh, I'm going to do mine right here. In fact, I'm going to have mine coming in front of my red flower. And then this one's going to come from behind the yellow flower. All right, so we've got our baby's breath on there. Now what we're gonna do is we need to make little stems. So I'm going to use a very watery version of my uh, burnt umber. So I'm actually adding water to it and I'm gonna water it down. All right, so this is important. We do not want very much on the brush. So dry your brush off because we already have water in there. So we're gonna pick up a little bit on the tip of our brush and then we are gonna very lightly draw. Oops, and see mine's already too dark. So I'm going to hold this up so you guys can see it, but I'm just very lightly bringing in little stems underneath those. Hardly anything. Oops. I accidentally painted in my white. We can fix that though. So there's a couple ways to fix it. You can either just paint more white over it, or let's see if it's, nah, I'm gonna have to paint more white over it. That's fine. Might as well touch them all up while I'm there. So remember to dry your brush off first. That was thicker than I wanted. So I'm just like barely touching the canvas. I, that didn't work out that well. All right. I wasn't sure about the baby's breath. Still not sure about it. But, you know, your dad had a heart attack after being beaten up. Oh, man. Then the next day, started hitchhiking back to England. Finally got home. The hospital told him uh, what had happened to him. He also fell off four high roofs, survived two bad car crashes. And, oh, my goodness. That's insane. <laughs> like, that's like, a, like one of those, like, uh, what is that, unbreakable? You know, the, um, the Shyamalan movie? 
just can't can't be he can't be put off man it's pr pretty base <laughs> like all right i'm gonna call this done i'm ready to be done it's been two hours here's what we're gonna do we gotta sign it right so i'm gonna use my paint pen I'm signing in gold because it's the color I happen to have, but normally I probably would have signed this in black. Uh, okay, let's talk about this. All right, so there are so many things in this painting that I'm not thrilled with. Um, oh, well, thank you, both of you, um, for saying so. But um, all right, couple of things. First of all, if I had waited for the, my, okay, let's start, let's start with mixing the colors. So what did we learn about mixing this like kind of, um, uh, remember, hold on, let me bring up the reference painting just so you guys can see. Let's bring up the reference painting. All right. So first thing you're going to notice is that this is orange, not green, right? Yes, we learned to be careful with the blue. Blue goes a really long way. All right, so I'm gonna bring back my painting. <laughs> Very different. So, um, so we learned that uh, not to mix too much blue or you get green, which, you know, I knew that you weren't supposed to use a lot, but I just overestimated, but really, really, really hardly any blue will, will make a difference. Okay. Um, so some things that we have going on here, I need to make my shadow just a tiny bit darker right around the, the base of this. Um, but it's not too bad and it's not the end of the world. Um, if this had been dry completely, I probably would have had better luck with the shape of my vase. It's not terrible, but it, it really could be shaped a little bit better. Um, the like it's leaning just slightly to the right um the blending here i had too much paint on here on the um th these are all we're just talking about the lessons that we learned about uh painting today so i had a little bit too much paint in here so when i went to go try to bring in the white it blended more than i wanted to um so there's that but i think overall it looks okay the flowers, so my flowers actually look pretty close to the ones in the picture. So I, I don't think that that's a, a bad thing. I'm, I'm thinking that maybe the picture wasn't like that great of a reference photo to begin with. It's possible. Um, Crixana says, you think the blending is one of the best parts about the vase? Well, thank you. Well, I mean, I've been doing blending for years, so maybe I like subconsciously did something right. <laughs> so thank you I appreciate that um, the blending in the background is my favorite part that that mistake that I made at the top where I, I, I put dark blue before I mixed in the white um, like that really worked out in my favor I like that a lot and I actually really like this shadow here I just I painted the base should go up a little bit here it's, it's just a little too far down there um, Still not a fan of the baby's breath. I think it adds, from a composition perspective, I think the baby's breath helps. Because um, if it was just if it was just the flowers, right? I'm trying to cover the baby's breath without the flowers. If it was just the flowers, um, that's okay. But yeah, it is a little boring. Like, I think it does need something, right? So the baby's breath was like a nice addition to that. But um, I'm just not sure about how our baby's breath looks. Specifically my baby's breath. Um, I don't know. It's okay though. I mean, compositionally, it was good. I think that that was important. Um, I definitely like the two flowers that I did uh, where I just went around rather than this one that I did in a more methodical way where I kind of made the cross first. I like these two better. So that is definitely something to know for the future that in the future I wanna just go around um, now this one might have worked out better for you and that's fine. 
It's all about learning what techniques work best for you. Overall, I would say it's okay. It's not my best painting, but it is okay. Um, yeah. There we go. So my, my favorite part is the blending in the background and this shadow here, which I really think is working well. Um, and actually, I kind of like the green. It's different. The orange would have made it pop more because blue and orange are opposite on the color wheel. Remember, we looked at the color wheel. and, and um, So it would have made, like if I had this more of that sandy color, it would have made this pop. But um, I think it's okay. <laughs> if this isn't your best painting, you definitely want to see my best painting. Um, I mean, I've done a lot of them. I mean, I think like most of, most of the time, my paintings turn out pretty well. Um, in these classes just every once in a while I'm just not thrilled with it this is just one of those once in a while you know it happens um, did anybody follow the painting with me um, and and upload anything I don't see anything in discord so I'm gonna assume no um, but yeah all right, so in the future, if you would like to upload something to Discord, I would like to see it. I'd like to see your work. Oh, you haven't gotten the brushes yet. No problem. Well, thank you everyone for joining me today. Um, I'll have my crochet class on Tuesday, and of course, we're doing drawing again next Friday. Um, I appreciate you joining me, and I look forward to seeing you in the future. Happy painting, everyone, and have a great weekend.